It's Lisa. Welcome to my studio for another vlog. Today I thought I would share with you something that, an experiment that I haven't tried before. Um, you know, I bought these molds. They are actually mushroom molds, so I'm not really sure how to use them. Uh, and I don't really want to look at the directions and I don't really want to read the firing guide. And uh, I just want to try and do my own thing because uh, they're supposed to make like a little mushroom cap. So you take your glass, you put it over top, you slump it like this, creates this little dome, then you put a little stem underneath it and you have a little mushroom. But I actually want to try to use them for flowers. So that's why I don't really want to follow the other anyone else's guides. I want to just kind of do my own thing and see if I can not only um, make a use for these molds, do something new that I want to do, but also, you know, um, kind of trailblaze a new way of using them without being boxed in by what someone else has already done. So sometimes I just like to be my own trailblazer and take my own path and see where it takes me. Now, if everything goes south and it comes out terrible, uh, then later on in the vlog we might be reading the directions and looking how the manufacturer suggested. But for now, we're just going to put caution to the wind and have a good time. So when I have a three-dimensional mold like this, the first thing that you want to do is measure the mold to determine how large your glass should be. So ceramic, these are ceramic. I have two of them so that I can make two at a time because if I'm going to make flowers and I want to make more than one and I don't want to wait for the kiln to go through you know, so many times, so I, I bought two. These have already been primed with shelf primer. You apply it, you let it dry, and that's why this has like a pink coating, and the inside is kind of a bisque color, but this has a, a touch of a pink coating because it is already primed. So ceramic cools faster than the glass. What that means to you, and when we decide how big the glass should be, is if our glass extends over this rim right here, when the ceramic cools, it's not gonna cool as fast as the glass, the glass is gonna cool faster. And so this glass is going to break around the perimeter. So that's not real desirable. Now that's what I know going into this. We may find out after we've cut a piece of glass and slump it over here that we could go bigger because maybe the process of draping over this shrinks it. And so maybe we can go a little bit bigger. So the first step is to measure the mold. I'm going to take this flexible tape measure and I'm going to put it here about on that outside rim up over the mold and bring it down the other side and to here is about six and a half inches. So I'm actually gonna cut a six inch circle. And we'll start with that and see how that works. Then um, if that works well, then we'll determine what size we need to do next time. So I've decided the first piece is gonna be a circle because it's basic, it's easy. I'm wondering if maybe this mold will make that circle more interesting simply because it has these um, contours here, these uh, in, like inside curves here, this interesting shape here. It's like a five-pointed star. Um, so, and then there's an indentation here. So I think maybe just a plain circle, we might get a really interesting shape without having to do anything else. But I'm also going to try another shape just because, again, we're going to experiment here. I have two. We might as well do two different things. So first step is going to be to cut a six-inch circle to put on here. Now, your least expensive material, easiest to come by, is clear glass. So I'm going to cut this sample piece out of a single piece of clear. So I've got this 12-inch piece of clear and I'm going to cut regular old circle. So over here I've got my circle cutter. This is my circle pro. This area right here has dimensions on it. So right now it's on like an 18 inch circle because I made a sink last time. We're going to loosen this up, bring it down here till it comes to the line that represents six inches, tighten that up, move my tools out of the way. Now bring the glass over here. What I want to do first is make sure that my cutter is not going to fall off the edge of the glass on the side, but I want to cut this glass as close to the corner as possible so that I have less waste. All right, something is not right here. I think my cutter tip needs to be adjusted a little bit. So we used this in a sink class last time, and sometimes this gets adjusted when it's not supposed to be. So let's go ahead and adjust that a little bit. A little more. This adjustment right here adjusts how far the glass cutter tip hangs down. So I'm loosening that a little bit and pushing the cut, the tip of the cutter up a little bit because it feels like, okay, that's good. So now it's just touching, when this is sitting the way it's supposed to, the glass cutter is just touching the glass. It's not, there's no pressure on there. That's good. Move this glass over. It kind of wants to stick to the surface, so I have to shimmy it a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, so we want this cutter real close to the edge here. And real close to the edge here. And test it again. 
good. That was good. Square this up. That's not really necessary, but it makes me happy. All right. So I'm going to double check my dimension. Yes, it's on six inches. All right. Now we're going to double check. It's not going to fall off the glass. That looks good. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and hold this here. Can you hear that? That's a good score. Ooh, did you hear that? It came right back to meet itself. Isn't that wonderful? Doesn't always happen, but it is wonderful when it does. All right, I'm gonna hold this up to my, my shirt here so maybe you can see the score line there, that nice circle that we have. I'm gonna bring it over here so maybe you can see it a little bit better as I cut it out. I'm gonna take my, grip, my cutting tools here. I'm gonna take my cutter, go in to, and meet up with this circle here and meet up with it over here. I'm gonna take a Sharpie and show you what that looks like. All right, found my Sharpie. So I wanna show you what this looks like so you know what I'm doing. Okay, so this is kind of approximate. I'm not drawing an exact circle, but so what I did was here's my circle score right here. And I took a score and I brought it into here and met up with it. Then I started here, here's my score line, and I took another score and carried it out. So what I'm hoping will happen is when I apply a little pressure here, the glass will break like this and go right here, and then I'll have this whole piece for another project or for another circle. So let's go ahead and we'll take our running pliers, make sure the top is up, the top is the side with the line and also with the screw, and also with my initial, there's an L there, so I don't get confused. We'll gently squeeze here. Did you hear that? That's the score line starting. We'll gently squeeze here. There it is going again. Now at this point, the glass is uh, in two pieces. So we want to be careful not to let it drop on the table. Oh, look at that. Did not go the way we planned. Let's go ahead and squeeze here. And there we go. So, all right, so it doesn't always work for me either. How about that? All right, no big deal. Like I said, clear as your, your um, you know, expendable glass. So now I'm going to take my runners and break off these other corners. It's almost good that that happened because now when it happens to you, you'll be like, oh, well, you know, glass breaks. So these are my grossing pliers, and I'm using these to take off that little bit of extra material around the outside edge. Now, usually I would be kind of nipping this off to the side not in the pile, right in my work area. So I'm definitely gonna wanna get my bench brush out and clean this up before I move forward. And the grossing pliers are nice for taking off just a little bit of material when you need to get right into that score line and grab close up to it. Okay, so we got a pretty good circle there. We're gonna call that one good. All right, so let's go ahead and take this to the grinder. All right, so I'm going to grab my bench brush over here and my dust pan and sweep this area before I do any more glass cutting because I don't want to get cut. And if you place your glass on top of one of those little shards, you could potentially break the glass. So that's not good. Either. All right, so we have a nice circle. Now I'm going to do another one that's more abstract or a little bit uh, freeform. So I'm going to take a compass. Do you guys recognize this? The old draftsman compass, right? ancient old tool but so what I'm going to do is um, take my tape measure I have a just a plain old white piece of paper here I'm going to measure across grab a pencil I'm going to make a mark here and a mark at six inches and a mark at three inches and I'm going to take this compass take the pointy side put it on that center spot make it large enough to make a six inch circle and then I'm going to draw a nice circle on this paper. Now I'm going to take a scissor and cut this circle out. So if you don't have a circle cutter, this is a great way to cut a circle. Or another option would be to put the paper right on top of this pencil line and cut around it. You'll probably have to do a little more grinding because you'll likely have a few more little of those pointy spots, but that's okay. If you don't have a circle cutter, this is a great way, great easy way 
to make a relatively small circle or even a large circle. You know, if you don't have a circle cutter that cuts something big, take this out of the way. So now I've got this nice circle. We could glue that on the glass and look, it's going to fit. We're going to make, oh, we're just going to make it. You could glue that on there and cut around it. You could put it underneath and cut over it if you wanted to. But we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to take this circle and I'm going to fold it. And then I'm going to fold it again. And then I'm going to fold it again. And now I'm going to take my scissor and I'm going to gradually cut So that I have a little bit of a, a flowery shape. Now I think that could be a little uh, softer. So I'm going to fold it back up. And soften this out a little bit. Put a little bit of a curvature in there. Okay, so let's open this up and see what it looks like. So basically we have like four petals. See how we've got that nice curvature there? And this is a relatively easy cut to manufacture because it's not too deep. But I still think it could be a little softer. So I'm going to do it again. And this time I'm going to come over to the center more. What I'm trying to do is make this more gradual right here. All right, now it just kind of looks like a rounded square. I'm not really loving that. Well, another new development. Let's try making it this little indentation deeper. So we have more of a, um, a greater curvature here and a greater indentation. Let's see what that looks like. Well, that's a little bit better. I think I like that. All right, let's go with this one. Um, this piece is experimental. So this has four tips. This actually is one, two, three, four, five which I think would be preferable. I mean, let's see what that's going to look like on there. You know, what's that going to look like? Oh, I don't know. Could be pretty cool. So because it's an experiment where you're working with clear glass, I want to see basically what I want to see is one sheet of glass, one layer sufficient for this project or not. Do I need two layers? Is this a good dimension across six inches? And what is the effect of having a plain circle and having a circle with a design to it? That's the, those are the answers that we want from this test. And What's our slumping temperature and time? Is the normal 1265 for 10 minutes a good temperature and a good time? I don't know. If the clear glass breaks, we learn, or if it's over slump, we learn, okay, uh, we need to do a little less time, a little less temperature. If it doesn't slump enough, a little more time, a little more temperature, depending upon what we want to do. So um, let's just go ahead and cut this piece out and get these pieces of glass on top of those holes and in the kiln to slump. I've created quite a bit of mess here for myself. Move some of those things out of the way. All right, I'm going to grab a glue stick. Out of my little rolling cart here. Got a glue stick. Because this pattern has a bit of a texture to it. It doesn't really want to stay still. Now, you could also trace around it with a Sharpie. But this seems to work well. I'm going to glue that on there. Just enough so it stays so I can cut around it. And I'm going to start over here. I mean, I'm going as close to the paper as I can without cutting into it. Rotate this to make it easier for me. Now glass wants to cut straight. So when we are asking it to do these different curves, you do it in a series of straight lines in order to get these curves. So you don't go around the entire piece in one shot. You do it in, you do it in steps. There we go. Now, pretty sure I'm all the way around. Yes, I can see my score line. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. Because this is narrow, I'm going to move these pieces out of the way so they don't get glass on them. Because this is narrow, I'm going to start with my grosing pliers and gently pull this glass out and away. Now, when you use the grosing pliers, you tend to end up with a little bit more of a... Now, this one here looks kind of deep. I'm going to add another score line because we don't want to break glass again like we did earlier. So let's take an extra step. There we go. All right, look how nicely this is coming. Look at how, so whenever you use these grosing pliers, 
you tend to have an edge that looks kind of chewed up. That's okay. The whole point is to get the shape you want. And as long as you're getting the shape you want, you're not really concerned about the edge quality at this point because we have the option to go ahead and grind it. That one's being a little stubborn, so I'm going to go to the other side, pull on that. All right, now here, I got another one of those little deep ones, so I'm going to go ahead and add another score line just to be on the safe side because we've got this thing three quarters of the way cut out. Let's try to keep it. All right, there we go. And look at that cool shape we have. All right, now we're going to take this off and we can reuse it if we love it. If we don't love it, we make another pattern. So we're going to go ahead and take this over to the grinder and give this a pretty edge. Okay, so here I'm over at my grinder. Got my piece of glass with my kind of rough edge. Um, I went ahead and cleaned the lid here because it does get dusty and stuff. Um, before I get started, I haven't ground in a couple of days, so I want to make sure that this has plenty of water. So I'm going to add some water to this surface. So take my big bucket of water here and just pour until the bottom of this grate uh, is in contact with the water. Ooh, there you go. Okay. And then I'm going to turn it on. I want to make sure it's plenty of moisture here. And I have a wet sponge back here. So the grinder won't hurt you. This is my wizard grinder. And this is a one inch grinding bit. Uh, regular grit, not heavy duty or anything. But you want to make sure there's plenty of water here because then it washes away all the dust, You uh, your bit will last longer, and it, you get a better grind on your glass. So what I'm trying to do is even out this edge. You can see in a couple spots I've got some sharp areas. We're going to try to take those down and make the edge uniform. take that edge off. Number one, we don't want to get cut. Number two, we want a really nice quality finished edge on the on the slumped piece of glass. So where I have a little bit of a bump, I'm staying a little bit longer, maybe going back and forth a little bit to make sure I get rid of that bump. Okay, I've gone all the way around. Kind of giving it a little inspection. I think it looks pretty good, especially since it's going to be a freeform, abstract kind of flower shape. I think uh, a little bit of variation in the edge will be fine. All right, so I'm going to turn the grinder off. This has a little bit of a residue on it and a little bit of the Sharpie mark. So I'm going to take this dunk it in my bucket, rinse it off, and then take this towel and dry the glass. And then reassess the edge quality and see now I don't have to worry about getting cut now because the glass edge has been taken down. Dry the front, dry the back. Once I've got it clean and dry then I want to try to handle the glass more from the edge than from the surface. That'll minimize fingerprints and I think it looks pretty good. So we're going to call that one done. All right so let's go ahead and grind the one that has the irregular shape. Right here look at this one. I'm turn the grinder back on. <coughs> It's not a perfect circle, it's not round. 
So all those extra curves, you know, remember glass wants to cut straight. All those extra curves increase the surface area and the bumps on the edge, so we have to do a little more grinding. This one came out. So look at that nice edge quality that we have there. And nice shape. We'll dunk that in the bucket. Give it a little rinse. Dry it off. And then we're ready to take these over to the kiln and put them on top of the molds. Okay, so so I have these two pieces of shelf paper. I'm going to put these on the bottom of the kiln to protect it just in case one of these pieces of glass falls off. Now we're not going to fire it to a temperature where they should do, they should melt or stick to anything, but you know, I always like to be on the safe side. I always want to protect my kiln because that's a big investment and I want to make sure nothing happens to it. So I think that's a wise move. So we're going to take these two pieces of shelf paper, the two molds, and the two pieces of glass over here to the kiln. All right, so I'm going to put the paper in here like this. It's overlapping, and that's fine because the glass should not actually come in contact with that. Put one mold here, and this other mold over here. All right, now I'm going to take the, uh, my hands are a little dusty, so I'm going to wipe them on my pants and take this irregular shaped piece, center it over the mold over here. Take the round one. Centered over this mold over here. Now, if it's not centered, uh, it's going to fall off. So that's one way that you know it's centered. There's that. And then also you can kind of visually look straight down at it and make sure that you have about an even amount of space all the way around. I think those look pretty good. Now, it's interesting, okay, it makes sense, but, you know, the glass is big, much more bigger than the mold, but because of that drop, the idea is that it's going to collapse and compress and go down and bend out like a flower or a mushroom. That's our hope, that's our intention. Let's see what happens. Now this is only a single piece of glass. So I'm gonna very, very, very gently close the kiln to make sure nothing falls off. So very slow, slow, steady, and easy. Make sure it gets it down there. All right, there we go. And then we're gonna take this to the slumping temperature, but I only have a single piece of glass, and it's actually a drape, not a slump. So I'm thinking, uh, slumping is 1265. I'm thinking about doing about 12, 1200 for 10 minutes. 65 degrees lower in order to ensure that we get something that looks good. We can always raise that up later on another piece of glass, but for now that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to take notes to make sure that if I have success or have variations that I like or don't like, I can go back and check those notes to know what to do for the next firing. All right, so it's getting starting to get warm here in Florida, so I'm hydrating um, constantly out here because um, you know the studio is beautiful, and I love I have a big open door, and I love the light, so I would much rather have the big door open than have the air conditioner on. But I have to keep hydrating, so I have to just keep drinking out of my sassy mug. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and check out this kiln. So we're going to do a slump. We're going to do 1,200. The kiln says it's at idle right now. It's in the pro mode, that's great. Uh, pro number one is for fusing. Pro two is for slumping. So we're going to go, when it goes to pro, we're going to hit the arrow down. Nope, oh, nothing happens. We hit the arrow up. And we're going to go to pro number two. Then we hit the start stop button. Um, set, this has three segments. Seg three. Rate one is 300 degrees an hour to 1265. We want this to be 1200. So we're going to hit the down arrow. You can hold it. Now when you hold it, it goes slow for a little bit, then it starts to like go like a bullet train. And then all of a sudden it goes, ah, past where you want, so you have to be a little careful. Oh. 
There we go, 1,200. That's what, exactly what we want. Then we're going to hit the start stop. We're going to hold there for 10. That might be a little long, but let's do it. Let's just do it. Let's see what happens. That's a consistent. Most of my stuff is 10 minutes, but I fire 10 minutes. Slump, 10 minutes. Uh, drape, 10 minutes. So we're just going to tack fuse, 10 minutes. That's pretty standard for me. So I'm going to leave that because that could be a constant, could be a good thing. So we're not, we, usually when I change a program, I try to change one thing at a time, not change everything. And don't forget, we're going to write this down because if we love it, we want to be able to repeat it. We want to tweak it. We want to know exactly what to do and how to do that. All right, it's on hold. Now it's asking for hold at 10 minutes. That's good. We'll keep it. Now the rate is 500 degrees down to 960. That's our annealing temperature. I'm going to hold there for 40. That's fine. Then 500 degrees. Uh, oh. 800. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's as long as that's below 950. Hold there for 10. Then it rests. If we're ready, we are. And now it's on and we're firing. So this is exciting. We're doing a test together. So clear glass. It's your best option for testing because it's inexpensive, readily available, gives you very, very good results. Now, it's really hard for me to do something so plain, but, you know, you got to start somewhere. And, you know, we can always break this up and use it for scrap pieces for something else. So anyway, I want to say thanks for joining me. I hope you're enjoying this fun piece. Can't wait to show you the results uh, in the next vlog. And uh, check out my new shirt, Choose Happy. I got some new shirts going on in my website, so check those out. Check out my sassy mugs. They're a lot of fun, too. And um, go to my website. Join my, my membership. You get to see more cool stuff, hang out with me, things like that. And I've got lots of terrific projects there that you're going to love. And then also subscribe to my blog, my newsletter, um, follow my Instagram, uh, check out my YouTube, and check out my other vlogs. And um, thanks for joining me, and uh, I will see you again soon. Until next time, happy fusing!